Hi everybody, welcome to another video in our Discovering Aurora's True Nature education video series. My name is Joy Thompson and I'm the Lead Natural Resources Specialist with Aurora Open Space. And today's topic is Aurora Water and Water Quality. And with this topic, this is really kind of a fun one because we start by talking about water all over the world and we bring it down to water that is right here in Aurora. And hopefully by the end of these different presentations, you can see that when we know where our water comes from, when we know who else relies on it, and we know how we can conserve it and take care of it, we can make good decisions about water for now and for the future for ourselves. So a couple things before we start. First, um, we do have some free questions that we sent to you, so please make sure that you're looking over those questions. You can stop the video at any point if you want to go back to those questions and answer them. There will also be some post questions at the end too. Um, but what we're gonna start by talking about right now is water around the world, which is why I have my globe here. So if we take a look at the globe, and I kind of spin it very gently like this, what percentage of the earth do you think is made up of water? Do you think it's 100%? Do you think it's 50%? Do you think it's 10%? I want you to think about that, maybe stop the video, maybe write that down. Okay, so I'm guessing, or I'm, I'm thinking that you probably wrote your answer down now. And what I'm going to tell you is that the Earth is roughly 75% water. So most of what we have on here on our planet is actually water. Now, can we use all of that water? That's the trick question. And you can write down if you think it's yes or no. And after you're done doing that, what we're going to take a look at is how much water we really can use here on our planet, okay? so. What I want you to imagine is that this beaker right here represents all of the water in the world. Clearly it doesn't, clearly this is just a model, which we use to bring things that are way too big or way too small into a realm that we can understand. But for now, imagine that this carries all the water in the world, okay? Now where is most of the water on our planet? Go ahead and stop the video, take a minute to write that down. All right. If you wrote oceans, you were correct. Most of the water in our world is in the oceans. So if any of you have been to the ocean and have maybe gone swimming in the ocean and accidentally drank some ocean water, you can probably answer this question, can you drink, can we drink that water? No, we can't. Can we use it for cooking or for cleaning or for so many of the things that we use water for? No, we actually can't. Because of the high salt content, ocean water doesn't work for most of what we do. Now, is it possible to take the salt out of the ocean water? Yes, it is. But at this point, it's a very expensive process that we only do in small amounts. Maybe one day we'll be able to do more of it. However, most of the water in the ocean at this point, we can't actually use. So what I'm going to do, and if you were here with me right now, you would be doing this, is I'm going to pour some of this water into this other beaker, okay? What I've just done is I've separated the salt water from the fresh water on our planet. 97% of the water on our planet is salt water, which means that I might as well take my salt shaker here and fill it with salt and set this off to the side because we're not going to be able to use that, okay? So this is what's left. And if 97% of the water on Earth is salt water, then what percent is fresh water? 3%, good job. If you wrote 3%, that's perfect. So this is that 3%. Now my question for you is, can we use all of this for drinking water and for cooking and cleaning? Go ahead and write your answer down. And the answer is no, we actually can't. A lot of it is locked someplace, someplace that we can't get to and some place that needs to be there to help regulate our Earth's temperatures. So write down where you think that place is, where you think that water is locked into. And if you said ice, you are correct. Most of this is actually locked in the Earth's glaciers and in the polar ice caps. So we can't use it, it's there because it needs to cool our planet, and there's a lot of wildlife that actually depends on that water being in ice form. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm going to pour some of this water into an even smaller beaker. This represents all of the fresh water that we can't use because it's locked in ice or glaciers. So I might as well just take that, pour it into an ice cube tray, 
and set that off to the side. Because again, that's not water that we can actually use. So now we're down to this much. So this is not water that's in the ice or glaciers. This is not water that's in the ocean. I want you to write down where you think most of this water is on our planet. If you said underground, you were right. Most of this is what's called groundwater. And a lot of that groundwater is buried deep underneath and within layers of rock. And it's actually pretty clean because it's been there for a long time, but it's very difficult to get to because it is so deep. And um, some of it is polluted by some of the things that we've done here on Earth. So I'm going to take this dropper here and I'm going to pull a little bit of this water out of the dropper and I'll take this and set it off to the side because that represents groundwater that's too deep or too polluted that we can't use. So this is what's left in this tiny little beaker here, okay? And this is what we call surface water. So this is water that's in oceans, or no, I'm sorry, not oceans. It is in lakes, it is in rivers, it is in puddles, it's in your refrigerator, it's in your body and in my body and in plants, which need water too. Can we use all of this? No, we actually can't because believe it or not, 96% of the fresh water on our planet is too polluted for us to use. So I'm gonna hold out my hand. If you were here, I'd have you do it. And watch this. This one little drop of water that I put in my hand represents all of the fresh water that we can actually use. And that's less than 1%. It is actually 3 one hundredths of a percent that we can actually use here on our planet. And it's not just for people. Animals need to use that water. Plants need to use that water. A lot of other living creatures need to use that water in order to be able to survive. So that is one drop that we all have to share and that we all have to take care of. So um, do you think that taking care of the water that we have is a good idea? I would say that it absolutely is because all living things on our earth require water in some form. Very, very, very few things don't. So what we're gonna do right now is stop and have you take a look at some of the post questions after this video and answer some of those questions. And when we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit about watersheds and what that means in Colorado. Stay tuned.